All that blocks your focus. See, when you have this mental clutter in there, when you have anger and you have disgust and you have all this making your life miserable, you can't focus. You can't focus on being a good mother. You can't focus on being a good father. You can't be focused on being a good spouse. You cannot focus on doing your job to the best way that you can do it. 70% of the people in this country walk around angry all day long. You know what you're probably saying to yourself? Talk to my clients. I can, make, I can bump that number up to 85. Okay? But all of that blocks your focus. And if you just had one day, one week, for one year, would you be focused on all your clients who tell you, or maybe don't even return your phone calls? See, people who perform at a high level, they're able to focus and eliminate this mental clutter, and the way they do it is they use self-talk. Back to that statement, I said to myself, now, I turned, when I told you earlier, it was driving me crazy. That guy shows up at the, at the meeting with a penguin on him, flexes in front of the mayor. For five years, he would call me at the most inappropriate times with the most bizarre questions. What are we going to name the printer? <laughs> what? Don't you see him in a meeting? <laughs> I wanted to choke slam him. I can't even tell you how many times. Now he gets in that accident, he still calls me at the most inappropriate time with the most bizarre question. But watch this. The event of him calling me at the most inappropriate time asking me a bizarre question, that's the event. Okay? He's still doing that. I don't change that. I don't control that. Watch what I control, how I say to myself, I'm lucky I have my friend Brandon. There was a time I didn't think that I was ever going to be able to get one of those phone calls. See, how you talk to you affects how you feel and how you perform. Which leads us to the next part. Have any of you, see, it's not garbage in, garbage out. It's garbage in, garbage stays, garbage regurgitates. Are you walking around, the, walking around the office, quacking like those ducks at happy hour? My job's awful. This is awful. I can't believe this is going on. My client's this. My client's that. How about this? How about I say to myself, that economy going on right now, I'm lucky I have a job. My taxes just went up. I said to myself, we're going to get through this. We are focused. And I know you're focused because you wouldn't be up on these numbers if you weren't. Have you ever heard of this phrase, intentionality? Let me tell you what that means. Intentionality means to focus on what you want and get rid of what it is that you don't. And there's a second part to that. See, it happens before it happens. Aristotle Onassis was one of the richest men in the world. They asked him, what would you do if you lost all your money? You know what he said? He said, I would go find one of my friends. I would borrow $500, and in six months, I'd be a millionaire again. See, no one gets healthy eating pizza and ice cream. No one gets prosperity complaining about how awful everything is. You know, my mother's a first grade teacher. She's been teaching for 32 years, okay? And she comes home after the parent-teacher conference every single time and says, I just wish one time, just one time, the parent of the student who is struggling the most in my class 
just once. See, when, there, when you talk about things like performing at a high level and, and things like that, this, who shows up? All the people who want to perform. Shouldn't somebody who's out on the street homeless right now be at this talk? Okay. You have to start putting in your mind what it is that you want, not what you don't want. <laughs> and then focus on it and continue to put those things in and allow yourself to focus on it. See, it happens before it happens, and I'll explain that one to you right now. I go on a vacation in Mexico, and I am there. It's hot. I'm sunburned. I got mosquito bites everywhere. I'm sweating like crazy. I've got Montezuma's revenge. I'm on vacation, right? As I'm in the car with my friend Luis, there's a 1971 pickup truck that goes by. You could go out to the junkyard locally, find five pickup trucks that look better than this one that was on the road down there. But that's not the part. In the front of that pickup truck were six people. In the back, 17, I counted. Five holding babies. Those people had two things in common. All Mexican. And every single one of them had a smile on their face. See, I'm there. I live in the greatest country there is. I'm a pseudo-intelligent person. Some people may argue that because I'm a Steeler fan, but you know how that goes. Um, and I'm miserable. Those people's lives, I know, aren't going to be one of, of, of big time prosperity. But see, they were with the people that they loved. They were with their family. They were spending their time and focusing on what was most important to them. There I was, scratching, doubled over, okay? See, they intended it. They got up that day, they know they were going to have a tough life, but every day they intend to be happy. This whole intentionality thing, okay, I'll bring you right back here, okay? I don't like to get into politics in these things, but I knew Barack was going to win when I heard this statement. He had already started working on his presidential seal. See, it happened before it happened. He's already over in the other, other countries talking to people. See, his mind was on it. It was focused. He knew what he wanted, and he eliminated everything else. So we've got our time as our, our wealth. We're going to eliminate this mental clutter, and we're going to use this intentionality. We're going to focus on what it is that we want. As far as I can remember back to my childhood, my older brother is walking around the house saying this. I'm going to be a doctor. 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 Okay. I grew up in real humble beginnings. My parents were school teachers. Okay. My dad and mother were raising myself, my brother, and my my aunt. Okay. As a teenager, when they were a year, they were married a year, living on six thousand dollars. Okay. People in my small town are looking at my like my brother, and he's crazy. You're not going to be a doctor. What are you going to do if you don't be a doctor? So I'm going to be a doctor. He never let his mind stray from that. My brother did his training right here at Akron City Hospital. Okay, he's a general surgeon back in my hometown now. See, it happens before it happens. But the only way that happens is you've got to use that self-talk to eliminate the mental clutter. And if you don't think that your words affect other people, if you complain to somebody on a regular basis, and nothing's changing, you know what you are? You're a burden. 